Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Today is December 4th, 2019. Hit the like and subscribe and share to help support our channel. Be sure to pick up your free trial copy of the new CEP, Currency Exchange Planner, the number one must-have tool for Denarians for both pre- and post-RV planning. Link is in the description below. Simply fill out the form to register and an email will be sent to you with the download link. Mention the Denarian and get 20% off the full version. I encourage you, knowledge is power, stay informed and stay alert, we all cross the finish line together. First article of interest for today. Parliamentary Legal. The President of the Republic is currently the Prime Minister. The President of the Republic Baram Saleh is the functions of the resigned Prime Minister until the assignment of another person within a period not exceeding 15 days to this position in accordance with Article 81 of the Constitution. Committee member Baha Mahmud said in a statement received, Euphrates News, a copy, after the resignation of Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi was accepted by the House of Representatives in accordance with Article 75 of the Constitution. Although this article adopted by the House of Representatives special resignation of the President and not the Prime Minister after the resignation, the situation must be dealt with in accordance with Article 18 of the Constitution. She added that this article provides for the vacancy of the post of Prime Minister and provides that in the event of vacancy of this position, the President of the Republic for a period of 15 days provided that another person to form a government during this period in accordance with Article 76 of the Constitution in the sense that the government carries out its work, but headed by the President of the Republic. She pointed out that vacancy in constitutional jurisprudence includes four cases of resignation, dismissal, death, permanent disability or incurable disease preventing him from performing his work stressing that any action or deal with the current situation outside this article is unconstitutional. Next article of interest for today. Parliamentary Finance Reveals the Proportion of New Kurdistan in the Budget 2020. The Parliamentary Finance Committee, on Wednesday, on the proportion of the New Kurdistan region within the draft federal budget law for 2020 after the visit of the Kurdish delegation to Baghdad. The committee member Hainan al Qadu said in a statement to the information that the Kurdish delegation that arrived in Baghdad agreed with the federal government to commit to export 250,000 barrels of oil per day through the Somo National Company early next year, pointing out that the delegation demanded that the share of the region of the budget 14%, but the agreement was to determine the proportion of the region 12.7%. He added that the delegation agreed to the rate of 12.7% in exchange for taking half of the border outlets located in the provinces of the region and the other half sent to Baghdad, noting that the current political circumstances forced the provincial government to give up some controversial issues with Baghdad. According to international and local media that the Baghdad government has given the Kurdistan regional government 22% of the federal budget for 2020 in exchange for political concessions to choose the new prime minister after the acceptance of the Council of Representatives to resign the government of Adel Abdul Mahdi. Next article of interest for today. Pentagon. New evidence of Iran's threat to America in the Middle East. New evidence of an Iranian threat to U.S. forces and interests in the Middle East, state media reported on Wednesday, citing the Pentagon. The media quoted the ministry as saying that Iran has moved troops and weapons in a manner that raises U.S. fears of a possible attack if ordered by the Iranian regime, while stressing that there is no evidence of an Iranian threat to U.S. officials. Pentagon spokeswoman Rebecca Rebrick told Sky News Arabia that we continue to monitor the Iranian regime's military and proxies. We are very ready to defend American forces and interests if we need to. It is not clear whether the potential threat will come from the central government or the Iranian Revolutionary Guards, CNN quoted a Trump administration official as saying. The head of U.S. military operations in the Middle East recently pointed out that the United States expects some kind of Iranian action in response to U.S. sanctions and pressure, which are trying to get the regime to abandon its nuclear program.
I expect that if we look at the last three or four months, they are likely to do something irresponsible, said General Kenneth McKenzie, commander of U.S. Central Command. The United States confirmed that the Iranians had made several provocations against commercial shipping in the Gulf earlier this year and were also responsible for a massive drone attack on Saudi Arabia's oil infrastructure. Several weeks ago, U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper said that the administration is pleased to see a decline in Iranian public actions in the region and the administration wanted to send a signal that the way forward is through diplomacy but the military is ready to act as needed. Earlier, the Pentagon said Trump had agreed to send U.S. troops of a defensive nature, focusing mainly on air and missile defense. The Pentagon said that an additional 3,000 U.S. troops will be deployed in Saudi Arabia, pointing out that the troops to be deployed, including air defense and combat groups. In May 2018, Trump announced his country's withdrawal from the nuclear deal with Iran and reimposed tough sanctions on Tehran for its role in destabilizing the Middle East. Next article of interest for today. Urgent Parliament will hold an evening session tomorrow. The House of Representatives, tomorrow, Thursday evening session. The Director General of the Parliamentary Chamber in a statement received by the agency, Euphrates News. A copy of it attributed the presidency of the council to hold a meeting on Thursday at 4 p.m. Parliament was scheduled to hold its regular session on Tuesday but was postponed to complete discussion of the legal committee, parliamentary blocks and UNAMI experts on the bills of the House and Electoral Commission elections. Next article of interest for today. Mike Bent speaks in a letter about the importance of his visit to the capital of the Kurdistan region. Mike Bent's U.S. Vice President Donald Trump has sent a message to participants in the International Forum for Investment and Reconstruction in Nineveh, held in the city of Erbil, the capital of the Kurdistan region, in which he talked about the importance of his recent visit to the region. U.S. Ambassador Matthew Toller read out the message as the forum began. You play a key role in expanding trade relations between the United States and Iraq, Pence said. On his visit to Iraq and the Kurdistan region, Pence said that the recent visit to Iraq, Erbil is the result of the importance and full commitment of America in the development of bilateral relations, and support the achievements of Iraq as a country of prosperity, sovereignty and independence. On the importance of the forum, the U.S. Vice President said, There is no doubt that this forum will be a factor to find a steady work for Iraqis, especially for males and females of young people, as well as it will be a factor in order to maintain Iraq's ancient civilization. At the end of the letter, Pence thanked the Kurdistan regional government, which helped to convene the forum, saying, There is no doubt that America with a free democratic and prosperous Iraq. Pence last month made a surprise visit to Iraq, during which he inspected his country's forces at the Ain al-Assad air base. Western Iraq met with senior officials of the Kurdistan region of Iraq, and only telephoned Iraqi Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi. Next article of interest for today. Source. Soleimani and Qatarani in Baghdad to find a successor to Abdul Mahdi. Consultations continue in Baghdad in search of an alternative to replace the outgoing Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi. The efforts of allies in both Tehran and Beirut to persuade the Shiite and Sunni political forces to walk with one of the candidates, while demonstrations continue to call for an end to the system of sectarian quotas in the distribution of positions, and condemned the Iranian interference in the affairs of the country. Consultations are intensifying in Baghdad to find an alternative to the resigning Iraqi Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi after the efforts of Tehran and Beirut to persuade the Shiite and Sunni political forces to walk with one of the candidates, although most of the Iraqi demonstrator condemns the Iranian control over the joints of government and demands to stop the hand of the neighbor from any future authority. The news agency, AFP, a political source close to the decision-making circles in the Iraqi capital is saying that the commander of the Quds force in the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Qasem Soleimani is in Baghdad to push for the nomination of one of the figures to succeed Abdul Mahdi. The same source pointed out that the official file of Iraq in the Lebanese Hezbollah, 
Sheikh Mohammed Gothrani, also plays a major role in the issue of persuading the political forces of Shiites and Sunnis in this direction. Next article of interest for today. North Korea threatens a full-scale armed conflict with the United States at any moment. North Korea has warned that a full-scale armed conflict with the United States could begin at any moment, vowing to respond at every level to any possible use of force by the U.S. government. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was very upset by the unimaginable statements of U.S. President Donald Trump, the chief of staff of the Korean People's Army, Park Shin chun said in a statement released by the country's official Korean Central Agency. During the NATO summit in London, we are very disappointed by the president's remarks about the possible use of weapons against our country. Such flaunting attitudes and comments could hurt the U.S. leader himself. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea and the United States are technically still at war, and relative calm could turn into a full-scale military conflict at any moment, even by accident, he said. I declare that if the United States uses any force against us, we will certainly take a response as soon as possible from our vision of the situation, he said. The use of armed forces against the DPRK would be appalling for the United States. On the sidelines of the December 3-4 NATO summit in London, Trump said he still believes in the North Korean leader, describing their relations as good, but added that Kim Jong-un loves launching missiles noting that the United States will use force against North Korea if necessary. Next article of interest for today. U.S., China move closer to trade deal despite harsh rhetoric. The U.S. and China are moving closer to agreeing on the amount of tariffs that would be rolled back in a phase one trade deal despite tensions over Hong Kong and Xinjiang, people familiar with the talks said. The people who ask not to be identified said that U.S. President Donald Trump's comments Tuesday downplaying the urgency of a deal shouldn't be understood to mean the talks were stalling, as he was speaking off the cuff. Recent U.S. legislation seeking to sanction Chinese officials over human rights issues in Hong Kong and Xinjiang are unlikely to impact the talks, one person familiar with Beijing's thinking said. U.S. negotiators expect a phase one deal with China to be completed before American tariffs are set to rise on December 15, the people said. Outstanding issues in the talks include how to guarantee China's purchases of U.S. agricultural goods and exactly which tariffs to roll back, they added. Next article of interest for today. Parliamentary Finance. We have not reached the 2020 budget and may be resolved by the new government. Parliamentary Finance Committee confirmed on Wednesday that the budget of 2020 did not reach Parliament and is still at the table of the caretaker government, indicating that the budget may be resolved through the new government. A member of the committee Sam Alakili told the information that the government faced great difficulties in preparing the budget 2020 in light of the functional degrees that have been launched recently. Allo Gailey added that the 2020 budget has witnessed a lot of continuous changes since the government started preparing to this day. She pointed out that the budget has not yet reached the House of Representatives and may be the decisive when the formation of the new government, which in turn will consider the budget, may be amended to send to Parliament for a vote. Next article of interest for today. Washington, Iraq today stands at a crossroads. And this advice to political leaders. The United States has described the situation in Iraq today as a crossroads. The U.S. Embassy in Baghdad published a part of the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Kelly Craft's speech to the Security Council on Tuesday on the situation in Iraq, saying, Iraq today is clearly at a crossroads. The world has seen in recent weeks the exit of Iraqis from various walks, the slogan, Sunnis, Shiites, Turkmen, Christians and Yazidis are all one Iraq, gives us the hope of a nation away from sectarian violence, corruption and external influence, leading to this nation assuming its primary responsibility for all its people, including providing electricity, water, health care and education. While the United States hears these shouts of hope, at the same time it supports the Iraqi people in their relentless quest to build a country where all their citizens are prosperous.
that means working on electoral reforms, strengthening good governance, tackling corruption and expanding economic opportunities. But more importantly, it will require Iraqi leaders to respond to all citizens and be responsible. It is the responsibility of the state to protect its people, she said. Next article of interest for today. World Bank. One-fifth of Iraq's population lives in poverty and a quarter of youth are unemployed. The most important problem that has brought most of the demonstrators in Iraq to the streets of Baghdad and other provinces is the problem of extreme poverty in one of the world's richest countries, OPEC's second-largest oil exporter, a report by the Digital Journal said on Wednesday. The problem of poverty is one of the reasons that the demonstrators ignored the resignation of Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi, considering themselves as failing to eradicate rampant corruption that deprives them of public jobs and services, the report said. Iraq suffers from a very deteriorating healthcare system, where hospitals are severely short of equipment and doctors are often threatened on the basis of political or tribal conflicts, the report said. According to the World Bank, Although Iraq is the second-largest producer of crude oil in OPEC, but one out of five of its population live in poverty and unemployment rate among young people a quarter. The government continued to be the country's largest employer in decades, but has recently struggled to create jobs for a growing number of graduates, with young people accounting for 60% of the population of about 40 million, which is set to grow by another 10 million a year ago. 2030. The future looks bleaker given the expectations that heavy crude oil exports, which finance more than 90% of the Iraqi state budget, will become less profitable as the world turns to other sources of energy, the report said. Next article of interest for today. What's the future of the agreement signed between China and Iraq? The spokesman for the information office of the Prime Minister, Saad al-Hadithi, said that the future of the economic agreement signed between Iraq and China and the government of Abdul Mahdi will be determined by the next government. The Hadithi, in a statement reported by the official news agency, conscious that the assessment of the matter is up to the next government according to its directions. Interstate agreements and commitments usually continue even with a change of government, unless the new government has a different opinion, he said. Abizade and talk that the agreement signed between Iraq and China have great benefits to the Iraqi economy at the level of revitalization of different sectors, especially industrial, agricultural, commercial and transport as well as creating jobs through the revitalization of the local market. He continued, I rule out that ignore any future government, the agreement concluded with the Chinese side which is beneficial to the Iraqi economy and is not linked to this government or that as much as it benefits the citizen. Like and subscribe to be alerted as news unfolds from Iraq. Get your free trial copy of the new CEP, Currency Exchange Planner. Link is in the description below. Fill out the form to register and an email will be sent to you with the download link. Mention the Dinarian and get 20% off the full version. Stay informed and stay alert, knowledge is power, and know that today we are one day closer than yesterday. More articles of interest to come, over and out for now, the Denarian.